Hello, I am honored to welcome you on behalf of women living under Muslim law to songs of protest, a virtual concert where brave Iranian singers will provide their voices and music for resistance. My name is Pascolina Ekström. I am a doctoral researcher at the University of Helsinki, Finland. During the last few years, I researched how Iranian musicians and fans use music to express their defiant identities and promote their right to self-actualization. Let's remember that solo singing by women has been banned in Iran since 1979. As a result, women are given spaces only in choir. They can participate as background vocalists in concerts and in studios. However, they cannot perform as lead singers. Following Amini's dead, the catalyst for woman life freedom, musicians have led the protest in Iran. Nevertheless, they have faced severe consequences, such as imprisonment and even capital punishment. Iranians have shown a great commitment to their cause despite the regime's effort to silence them. Meanwhile, the Western world has done a little more than issue a few statements. During my research, I had the pleasure of meeting some of the bravest Iranian singers. These women have come together today to raise their voices and sing for the freedom of their people. Before every performance, you will learn something about them. Enjoy. And it's time to get to know one of our artists. Uh, her name is Sara, but I will not tell you a lot because I let herself introduce. And uh, yeah, tell us everything uh, you want. Yeah, hi. Uh, I would like to first mention that it's really a pleasure, pleasure for me to be part of this. And uh, so, yeah, mm, I, I uh, had to leave my country years ago and uh, go abroad to follow and to pursue the passion for singing. And uh, that's why I left Iran. And uh, I'm, I'm so happy I'm able to uh, just do what I really want to do here. But you know, it's, there is always a deep sadness inside of my heart for missing a lot of things like family, friends, and a lot of other precious things. Yeah, we have to thank you because your voice is so powerful in so many ways. So thank, thank you, you so for much. being so brave and you are an example that we should follow. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. So tell us about the song that you decided to play for us. Yeah, so um, it's named The Street Serenade and it's composed by uh, Adib Orbani. And it was released during the Jina Revolution. And um, the lyricist is currently anonymous for obvious reasons, though. The first time I heard this song was uh, when I was choosing revolutionary songs for a performance that was going to be held for this woman life freedom movement. I was so impressed by its touching melody that I knew immediately that I wanted to have the honor of uh, performing it for that concert. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, um, there is an interesting point about the lyrics that it uses the main motto of this revolution, which is Zan Zan Azadi, Woman Life Freedom, as its chorus line. And we hear that a couple times through the song. And uh, it was really attractive to me. Um, also the way that um, the text blends sadness and mourning with the courage and the desire to change is so real and tangible since these are the feelings that we, we've all been experiencing throughout the years of uh, the Islamic dictatorship, specifically in the past year and a half. Yes. Thank you again. And I, sure. I think that everyone is going to love this performance. So yeah. if you have to summarize, what is your message for woman life freedom? Yeah, definitely. And there is a line in the text that says, your hair has kissed the winds. It has brought life to the city of the dead. And uh, I'd like to deliver this to Iranian girls and women as my message. And uh, tell them that 
you have truly brought life to our nation. You have manifested a forgotten dream, which is seeing Iranian women without a compulsory hijab. And I personally never imagined I would witness that with my own eyes. And you ladies have been courageously fighting for your rights and opposing this tyranny for years. And today we see the strongest manifestation of that. And we all know what dangers can lie in this for you, but you still continue to bravely fight for what is righteously yours. I deeply admire, admire you and uh, want you to know that you should be tremendously proud of yourselves. And you could be an absolute role, role model for all the women across the globe, especially those living under the oppression of dictatorships. And uh, it might be that the ultimate goal has not been met yet, but your hair is a reminder that the revolution is still going on, that um, the, the beautiful souls that we've lost will be everlasting in our memories, and that your perseverance and bravery, bravery will eventually pay off. I don't have words to thank you enough and to sure. follow this. And I guess the best thing is to just now listen to your wonderful voice. Thank, thank you, so, you much. so much. No problem. I appreciate it. Thank you. کوچه میزند تو را صدا صدا به نام کوچکت که نام آزادی است بگو بگو به هر که بغض کهنه اش نشست در گلو بگو در این میان تنها نیست آزادی زن زندگی زن زندگی آزادی از حسار ترس رد شدیم آقبت راه کوچه را بلد شدیم موی تو بوسه زد به روی بادا زنده شد شهر مرگ و مرد بادا به رقم چکم پوش ها حجوم خود فروش ها به یاد خون خواهرت شکنجه برادرت به نام نامی وطن به مان و در کنار من بخوان بخوان که این سرود ناگهان دهان دهان رسیده تا به هر کران با شادی آزادی زن زندگی زن زندگی آزادی آزادی زن زندگی زن زندگی آزادی And we are back to songs of protest and I am here with one of our, our wonderful artists, Shaya, I give you the word, tell us about you. Hi guys, so I'm Shaya Zandi, I'm an opera singer slash pop singer and uh, I worked on this song because I wanted to give this message to the world, I wanted this song to be in English language uh, because I think this is a subject that we need to talk about. The unity between women, that's really important. And I'm so happy to work on this song and on this project because I think this is re really important. This is not something that you can just uh, say in your own language for your own people. This is something that needs a bigger uh, force. You know, uh, We need to be together to be able to change something, change something in the world. Not only and your the song world. is amazing, I have to say. Thank you so much, you're so kind. Yeah, you know that I am really impressed by the lyrics and they made me very emotional. Like, it's it's beautiful. Thank you. So. Thank you so much. It means a lot because this is what I was meant, I, I wanted to do, you know? So if, if it made you feel that way, 
this is just the purpose of the song thank you yeah and tell us a bit more about the lyrics and the content of the song the lyrics is actually about unity unity between all women all around the world and the fact that we can rise from ashes uh, i started the lyrics with the fact that we are living in hell because i think that the world is going to a very bad and very dark place and i think that if this is hell and this is the worst thing that it can do to us we should rise from the ashes like the phoenix so this is like uh, the start of the lyric and then i go to the fact that it's not just we can rise from the ashes, but the fire itself, it's power, and we can use it. We can use it to empower ourselves, and together, we can really change something. So wonderful. Thank you. And can you tell Thank us you so your much. message for a woman like freedom? I think this was time for the change. This was the exact, like, perfect timing, because... The country was really, uh, it was prepared for this moment. And it's like a lot of events had to happen. So we get here and now we are here and everyone is ready for a change. And this is time and we're going to make it happen. Yes. Well, thank you so much for being so brave and for giving us your voice and giving your voice to all the women, the one in Iran and we have to think also about women in Pakistan and Afghanistan, as you of say, course. we should be united. Thank you so much. And now we are going Thank to... you for doing this project. And uh, it was so nice to meet you. Same, likewise. So now this is your song. Thank you so much. Goodbye. <laughs> of a better person to interview for this project 
She is fearless, bold, resilient, hardworking. And when I look at you, I see art. So, but I will not uh, take time from you. I want that you introduce yourself. So tell us who you are. Sure. Uh, I'm Charuk and I'm an Iranian artist, musician. And if I want to talk about my childhood and how I reach here, is that I came from uh, Azeri ethnicity of Iran, which literally means fire. And uh, the music and dance and storytelling was always like part of the primal part of uh, our family tradition. And we used to conduct the ceremonies and rituals and my family always used the music and dance and storytelling as a tool as to not as entertainment but very take it very seriously to conduct mm -hmm. these rituals and even as a kid i was an active member in these ceremonies uh, either as a music player or dancer or singer so um i was always fascinated with these deep culture of Azeris and Iranian culture mm -hmm. that uh, use music and use um, art as a serious tool to um, for healing processes for um, like conducting ceremonies and uh, yeah my mother was also uh, she was working in a theater department of one of the most famous um, uh, international and national performing arts stage in Tehran. So she was very disciplined to always make us trained and make us learn the music academically, Iranian music and also classical music. And uh, my childhood was always participating and attending in long, boring classical concerts or attending to uh, theaters from Eastern Europe, marionettes and so on. So mm -hmm. my childhood was very colorful and joyful of these cultural values and flowing and um, it was part of uh, my life and my family's mm -hmm. life. And um, after I, in my teenagehood, I graduated from <clears throat> um, music in a university of art and architecture in Tehran. And that uh, time I began my music career professionally. Mm -hmm. And when I lost my father at age of 17 or 18, I founded a school with the in inheritance that I received. I founded a school of music and psychology. And my aim was to bring all the artists from different parts of Iran and uh, like-minded people who were also working underground because the Islamic rules were developing and were spreading their dark wings mm -hmm. all over the culture of values in Iran. So um, uh, my aim was to bring everyone together, the music players and artists, performance um, artists in a safe place. Mm -hmm. And because we established like an orchestra, which I was a pianist in that orchestra, and also a choir, which I was a member of a choir as well. And also I started teaching piano in that academic uh, style. And I developed my uh, methods for children, combining different styles, not only music. To learn music, I established some methods to bring sculpture making, painting, and working with clay and create the sound of music. So, and but unfortunately, after eight years of putting effort and um, resources in that school, it was shut down by Islamic government because of the compulsory hijab rules. Mm -hmm. And um, I had to leave the country. And uh, since then, uh, the accordion is my main, main instrument because I had to travel in different neighboring countries and I had to, I needed like a portable uh, instrument mm -hmm. with me. And I started developing uh, different techniques in accordion and uh, learning mostly by myself. And I played in different bands in Turkey, India, Armenia. And uh, yeah, since then. Quite a life. Quite a life. <laughs>
And we are at the end of this event. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you want to support us in women living under Muslim law, you will find all the info and links down below. And remember to support women, women in Iran, women in uh, Pakistan, women in Afghanistan, women in Ukraine, women everywhere in the world, because our story is one. Thank you.